A girl seems oddly over-enthusiastic about everything in spite of the difficulties she encountered before we found her. To say that, ha that it has been a long time since I last had the opportunity to talk to someone like that would be a great understatement. Sadly, her cheerful demeanor is not enough to dispel the shadows that have followed me whenever I go, or wherever I go since Gala's death. Nor does it do anything to keep me from remembering Melon and his habit of trying to make the most fun of any situation. For somebody who has lived for so long, it's hard to see the world in the same light as young people do. Nowadays, I can barely remember those times of blithe disregard for responsibility, my romantic escapades and the misguided notion that we had all the time of the world for ourselves. Sometimes, I wish I could be get that I wish I could get rid of this burden. Before dying, my master told me that the true power of the Yorubi of Fire would become crucial for the fate of our world, and that I must make sure it's never misused by anyone again. It never occurred to me that her words could turn out to be more than a pain-induced delusion. Ah uh, yeah, um, this is in a return to Relfen. Relfen is the capital of the Arag Rive in the Northern Lands. Finally, the walls of Relfen. It's a pity that it's too dark to see the glory of the capital city. I've been here before. Now, let's move. Halt! Who goes there? I'm a humble messenger from a small village of Sylphward and a hard fortress. We came here to meet with the Grand Council. You and who else? Seize the traitor! Traitor? Who? So, exactly what in the world is going on here? You, fairy, are accused of betraying the alliance of the peoples of the far north, leading an elven faction found to be collaborating with our enemies in times of war and disclosing vital tactical, in tactical information which jeopardizes the safety of the aircraft country and our allies. Wait, what? Certainly this must be some kind of misunderstanding. I would never shift my allegiances against what's best for the free civilizations of Erdia. So there's apparently someone walking up to us, imprisoning her won't be, her will, imprisoning her will not be necessary. Allow her to, to come to the Grand Council. But my lord, so now the majors, a trial won't be required either. She's been framed by the enemy. Alinia, we have been eagerly awaiting your return. It's been a long time. But Anesius, it's good to see you again. Something terrible has happened. Yes, yes. Valon has told us everything. And there's more you need to know as well. Come with us. My lord, I... Our messengers were promised an audience with the council as well. And that will have to wait while we discuss some war matters. But since you have come from so far from protecting her, you may also come and listen. Very well, my lord. So, now to a huge chunk of story. We'd like to start by apologi apologizing for our actions. Or, more accurately, our lack to her. Had we understood the importance of your mission to Zogdenal, we'd have sent a whole fleet with you, and Gallus' demise could surely have been avoided. I... I don't think that would have made a great difference. The storm that caught us was a trap set up by our enemies. As soon as we got word of our, your plan to assault the Westman Hive on your own, we sent a platoon in your aid, but a path was obstructed by those Chexel creatures who took over the Bay of Glamdor to the southwest. By the time the soldiers arrived, it was already too late. Not only did we not find you or the Leech Malcatcher, but the planes had completely disappeared. 
Oh, but disappeared? Everything vanished at the center of the explosion from which you escaped. The hive, the rocks, the clouds. Everything had completely disappeared, according to, to the reports we got. The area surrounding the massive crater turned into a vast, ashy desert devoid of any traces of life. Artificial or otherwise. They also say the air itself has turned thin, as in the tallest peaks of the hot mountains. We could only assume you had also been caught in the explosion and were destroyed along with the necromancer. With the ongoing war, we couldn't spend much time or resources in searching for you, so we decided to seek assistance from a seer who could tell us what happened and why. That's when we found Valon, who has been of great help for, to, us, to us in this past year. Hold on. That isn't possible. A year? But it has been it has been less than a month. For you, my lady, time only continued to flow after the point you reappeared in our country's borders. But for us, time has gone by as usual. It's been a little more than a year since the destruction of Westmere. We suspect you were at the very center of the explosion, which may have caused an anomaly that brought you forward in time. Apparently about 11 months, even. Actually, it may have been my own fault. I used a teleportation spell I had just learned, without mastering it first. Just as I felt as though my very existence has ca had come to an end. But the entire place vanishing doesn't make sense. How could it happen? There are many things we still haven't learned about our enemies that are perhaps essential for putting an end to this war. With Kiara and Horo, we sent them to you after securing the Chaos Outpost in Westmere. I fear we have never heard those names before. Assuming they stumbled about uh, upon the same class and number of enemies as our men did, it's very likely they didn't make it. If you can provide me with more information, I may be able to find out what occurred to them, but it will take time. While Valen was trying to de determine your whereabouts, new riots took place between the elves in the lands to the east. There are rumors of a certain rose-haired fairy allying herself with the leaders of the Chaos Empire, which is why you and your people have become rather unpopular amongst our peers. The elves are once again divided in fighting their own kinsmen on the eastern border of our country, but one of the factions is clearly at an advantage thanks to their alliance with the Empire. We suspect they may be planning to invade us next, taking advantage of the tight situation on the southern borders. borders. Furthermore, it is said that a great explosion took place in Glamdro a few days ago. We haven't received any confirmation yet, but it, we fear it's in this it's of a similar nature to the one which destroyed Westmere. If that's true, then we may have just lost our largest western garrison. I see. It is of utmost importance that the situation in the east is cleared up. The friendly elf faction has asked us for aid. But as it is now, we are unable to gather the complete council to come to an agreement. We currently don't have many men to spare. As it has been suggested that you so it has been suggested that you could lead me lead here in order to assist them and hopefully discover the in identity of this mysterious impersonator. I think I've had enough experience with leading militia men in the forest to, for my liking, and I highly doubt you could take <coughs> I highly doubt they could stand a chance against those demons and biomechanical creatures. Eh? What? It was never our intention to send you alone with barely trained fighters. Amongst your messengers was one of Malkesha's very own disciple, disciples. Disciples? A woman by the name of Sunara. She is willing to assist by leading a new undertow against our enemies for you. If you agree to help us, we will also make sure to keep you informed of any important events from the main battlefront, sending you messages 
through Valen. You'll also be able to communicate with us this way. There is a very important journal we retrieved from Kev's capital. And Malkesha told me before his destruction that he passed it to Kiara, the desert elf, in case neither of us would make it back from the hive. It is my hope that she and Toro are still alive somewhere, or at the very least, they passed the journal to another trustworthy person. I will agree to lead the expedition on the condition that you also do your best to locate it. That's a fair deal. Also, I would like to know what this journal contains. It makes it f such a great priority you to, for you over your reputation and people. Markesha didn't get a chance to talk with me about the contents of the journal besides the location of the hive where the half of Jechnagov was supposedly stored. Before his destruction, he referred to a greater cause, one that transcends the fate of earlier, and I have a feeling that's about something he read in it. The journal was written by the Chaos Emperor himself, so the information within should be accurate and relevant for our purposes. That is, assuming the heart of the colossal creature we destroyed in Westmere was truly Jechnagov's. I'll do whatever it takes to find out about a journal, my lady. Very well, well then. Tomorrow we'll provide you with further instructions for your mission. We'll talk with the messengers from Sufort now. And that's the scenario. <laughs> and the story scenario. Who a lot of talking. So first of all, uh, just to point something out in case you did not notice. And um, there's... The campaign description talked about a mysterious leader who um, seems to be willing to invade uh, the, the alliance of the peoples of the far north, and it is referring to this imposter Alinia, to this imposter Lady of Light leading the Elder Faction, allying with the Chaos Empire. Ooh. Anyway, that's a scenario, and that's what I'm. Do. That's what I'm playing for the day. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Also, have fun.